Hey guys, welcome back to BIM Rules of Engagement. This is Rule 13, where we talk about even digital has its limitation. By now, I think we can all agree that in this series, it's taught us that if we want to create an effective team, we still need quite a few more important components. Remember, we all have our own strengths as well as our weaknesses. And that might be in, let's say, your technology or even in your character. And this diversity creates that strong team within, within the project itself. And even if there are egos at play, let's maybe just put that aside for this particular rule. Remember, we can't all be the same. Some of you will be leaders, some of you might be innovators, and then some of you might even just be followers. Your team is a combination of all of that. And you cannot just rely on a tech-savvy team. That's not going to cut it. Let's say, for example, you have someone in your project team who isn't tech savvy, or even for that matter, let's say political savvy. You still have to embrace their skills. And as a team leader, you need to actually understand the team's strengths as well as their weaknesses. If some, let's say, are faster in technical work than others, you have to accept that, irrespective of how many courses or software training they have under their belt. Remember, certificates don't make us professionals. They're there to create a foundation to tell the team that you actually have some knowledge of the task or the subject at hand. If someone in your team, let's say, works better unsupervised, which in today's way of working is the new way of working, there will still be some team members that need a more hands-on management approach. And this situation needs to be managed or even looked at as from a pragmatic approach. Let's say, for example, you have an estimating team that's not quite as efficient or as determined or as ambitious as, let's say, your design team, because let's say they didn't understand the design authoring tool of choice on the project. Remember, some of your team are quite possibly also going to be technology laggards. And you might need to accept that, let's say, the QS team will have a hidden skill that you haven't yet identified. You might not always need to have a tech savvy team but you will need to have a team that understands the bigger picture remember the provision of digital training can also make a team as well as staff and within that organization feel more appreciated and can help maybe contribute to a more vibrant company culture politics aside and unfortunately the construction industry is still well known for its poor people development initiatives especially within the technology field so guys, we have to be realistic. Remember, your whole team have limitations. And you have to compound the challenges that they have with the digital ones too. Some will take their creative wings and they will soar with new ideas, new innovations, even look at new open source ideas as a team. You have to also accept the fact that there will be limitations as well as traditional ways of working. And you have to love them for that because these limitations are their valuable parameters. And each of one, each and every single one of them will bring something out of their best to the team. And maybe while you're at it, have a look and check your own limitations. And if you think you don't have any, maybe you are the team's limitation. Now, Herman van Eden is a cost consultant with RRB and is a quantity surveyor by profession. He also has a strong background in estimating technologies and understands the concept when we talk about limitations when discussing technology within our industry. Uh, my name is Herman and I'm privileged to be a guest today on these 28 rules. Today's rule is all about the limitations of digital or the fact that digital also still has certain limitations. For the last few years, I've actually had the privilege to work with a massive array of different consultants mostly quantizers as well, and estimators who work in different positions for consultants, contractors, developers, etc., across a whole range of companies. Now, many of these companies will actually consider themselves to be very tech savvy or even at the forefront of digitization. Now, however, when we get into the nitty gritty and start unpacking their workflows, it comes to the forefront that they actually still rely very heavily on Excel spreadsheets, or some of them even still do manual tables. But, you know, compared to some of my peers and fellow mentors on this specific channel as well, 
I mean, they are doing workflows in like Dynamos and Revit that are like seems like years ahead of, of these workflows. So what I believe that this rule actually aims to address is exactly this. And up until as recently as three years, my own exposure to BIM was also very limited. And if I hadn't moved into my previous job, I might actually be one of these colleagues of mine or you know, peers of mine that are stuck in a workflow that's just not as you know, digitized as it could be. And these workflows are very quickly become, becoming obsolete or even complete, completely antiquated. Now, one of my responsibilities personally I, on a day-to-day -day basis is to train clients as well or to train users. And this is a massive honor because it's really, I'm really passionate about education. That's why I'm so privileged to be on this channel as well because um, it's all for the education piece of digitization and construction. And these trainees can also range from anyone who is fresh out of university or even still in university all the way to you know, associate directors of companies. And a massive part that I found of education is to try and dispel or disprove certain myths that people believe and that are stuck or sort of stuck in people's minds. Now, we live in a digital age where people are consuming content all over the show, whether you are at home watching TV and on Facebook or Instagram or whether you are at work and um, <laughs> scrolling around on your LinkedIn or YouTube like this channel, we get exposed to a lot of different contents. And unfortunately, a lot of this content, because of the, the nature of these social medias, they just try to garner likes and garner you know, likes and views and um, clickbaits and, and those kind of things. And the problem with that is that it actually creates certain myths or state certain facts that are not quite true. Um, one of these that I encounter really often is what BIM will mean for various professions, especially in the construction industry. I've heard various iterations of this all the way from, you know, it can replace all of our jobs and none of us will actually have any professional jobs left anymore. And as much as I am fascinated by machine learning and artificial intelligence, um, the reality is that for the most part, when it comes to BIM, our jobs are fairly safe. Um, now I say that in a very trying time, you know, I'm really compassionate and I'm sorry if anyone has been affected by COVID. I know the times are tough, but on the same breath, a little bit of encouragement is even where I'm at, I can see definite changes in the market that, you know, there's some murmurings, the market's starting to pick back up again. So just hang in there. And I, I really trust and hope with you that you'll find a new opportunity soon. And then it will actually turn out to be a blessing in disguise. But apart from that, so let's move on. Well, you know, and compared to 30, 40 or 50 years ago, our daily tasks might look quite significantly different than what it has been. Okay. And, um, what it is today, and if we consider how fast the digitalization process is going, 10 years from now, it might have you know, changed completely again. So this change is actually good and we can embrace it. But I believe that BIM, as opposed to replacing us, is just another tool in our, or another arrow in our quiver, so to speak. The next step is that with this myth also comes a certain fear because obviously, a lot of our securities in our professions and a lot of our securities is in our job because it you know, generates our monthly income or whatever the fact is. And we are quite reliable on it, um, unfor well, unfortunately, some of us love it. But there's a fear element that comes with it. And add to this fear the steep learning curve that seems to be prevalent when it comes to BIM talks, at least not necessarily BIM as a reality. But there's a steep learning curve, and it seems as if BIM is a complete new set of knowledge that I need to obtain, or you know, a whole new set of rules or techniques that I need to master before I can uh, be a BIM guru, so to speak, or really be you know on top of BIM. And this is also not really the case. And that's another thing that I find much much pleasure in when I start explaining this to some of the users, is that it's actually an add-on to knowledge that you've already obtained through your professional year, uh, through your professional career. And that's why I'm addressing it here as well, because BIM is not only for students and it's not only for the next generation of quantity surveyors or professionals. 
um, it actually stands to benefit all of us um, who are willing to give it a chance. And a lot of what you actually know about them or what you will come to know about them is just an extension of what you already know about construction and knowledge that you've accumulated over your professional lifetime, whether that was uh, spanned over, you know, four, one, five, 30, even 30 years. So this is the preface of what I want to say and what I want to conclude about this specific rule is that, yes, we believe that BIM is the next big step in construction, but it's also not the next big, big step because it's already here and it's already being implemented really successfully across all different or a lot of different regions, almost globally, I would say. But this does also not mean that all of the limitations that come with digitization has been dealt with. And it doesn't mean that BIM is completely foolproof and completely, um, you know, or that all digitization and digital processes will eradicate any sort of gaps in the system that we know of. Um, so let me put it in simple terms uh, as a, or we'll use a simple example illustration. So when I started working roughly around 10 years ago, I arrived at my first job and was really excited, got my first workstation and got my a computer. Uh, on the computer was a little post-it note left for me there by our IT guy. And this post-it uh, post note had my name and my password for the laptop, but also for my Outlook account. Now, I've been using Outlook ever since um, in every job that I've been, and it's literally a part of my day today. However, I've only recently, and when I say recently, I mean maybe six months or a year, been using Outlook to a little bit more of its uh, features or a little bit more of its actual uh, potential or power, the way as traditionally, I've only used it for emails and you know, scheduling meetings. Um, I now also use it to manage my tasks, to schedule follow-ups and reminders for these follow-ups, uh, to create email templates, because a lot of the emails that I send is very repetitive, so I can have templates available at a click on the button. And I can just send them on instead of having to retype email after email. It's actually saying more or less the same thing. Um, now, I don't want to make it sound like you, we are trying to get lazy and that's why we are using you know, digital advances. But what I'm trying to say is there's a very good balance that we can find with these digital advancements. Um, and that's what I want to emphasize today as well. And what we have to remember is that all software and all digital advances are merely tools to facilitate these processes and workflows that we are already familiar with. And yes, sometimes it might you know, get rid of a complete step or even a few steps in the whole cycle, um, but we need to find the right fit as well. Um, so you know, again, if I go to a hardware shop and I want to buy a hammer, there is multiple choices available and there's even as much as a, a 10 pound hammer that I can use for demolition works and knocking down a wall. However, if I'm gonna buy that hammer because I can afford it and because I think it looks impressive and I bring it home and I want to just put a few nails up to put a few frames on the wall, that hammer is unfortunately just not fit for purpose. So I'm probably gonna break a few nails or bend a few nails and just be frustrated. Whereas a small hammer would have done the job way better and I probably would have saved a bit of money in the process as well. Um, so it's all about those, you know, identifying the processes, thinking about workflows and thinking about the optimization of those workflows for me. Um, so just to, to wrap it up is, I believe workflows and people are dynamic and um, possibly fairly predictable. Um, a lot of us, most of our behavior, a lot of our behavior can be considered to be fairly predictable. However, we also have spontaneity. We also have um, impulsiveness, you know, and it's in that that I find we can embrace these digital advances and find the benefit that it has for you personally. Um, yet, be free and use your own creativity and don't come to me because I've used this excuse in the past saying I'm not creative. All of us have a little bit of creativeness inside of us, uh, some of us more than others, and to the envy of even someone like me as well. Um, sometimes I wish I was a bit more creative, or, you know, um, but that's why I'm a Kwani surveyor. I just like the numbers and I like the sort of mundane and step-by-step um, -step processes. 
Um, but do embrace that creativity and um, be courageous enough to, you know, take that step and take that step towards digitization, identify the limitations, and then find the creative ways to actually overcome those, um, those limitations. Because that's what probably brought the software or the digital advancement to the forefront in the first place is that someone identified a need or a, a, a gap in a system um, and that's how we overcome them. So yeah, just keep going um, and embrace those limitations. Uh, thanks for having me and look forward to seeing you guys around. Cheers.